Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today we're going to take a look at some nice features in Power Query that help you manage and manipulate your data. I've done a couple different posts about Power Query. One, how to merge files. Another one, how to unpivot your data. This is going to show you a few other features that you can use in Power Query that help you manipulate your data so that you can better perform the analysis on your worksheets in tools such as pivot tables. So let's take a look how to do this in Excel. So here I have some data on the sales of various items by our salespeople. I have the salesperson's name, the date they sold, five different items, a total for those sales. I have the region they're in. And notice at the bottom of each region, I have a subtotal and I have a space between each group. And I have five different regions here. And then I have a grand total at the bottom. And a couple other things to notice that the region name is only in the first line of each region. Also, the salesperson's name is in all caps. And I want to fix all these items in order to convert it to a table that I can use pivot tables to analyze with. So what I'm going to do is go over to the Data tab. Now I'm using Excel 2016, which has Power Query built into the Data tab. In 2010 and 2013, it's a separate tab, and you have to download Power Query from Microsoft, and I'll put a link below in how you can do that. But in 2016, I'm just going to go to the Data tab, and I'm going to say From Table. Excel tries to figure out the size of the table. Notice it didn't quite go all the way down, so I'm going to change my last row of 219 to 221, and then I'm going to say OK. And what Excel will do is take that data, open up the Query Editor, and populate it with the information from that worksheet. So one thing you'll notice here is as I scroll down, you can see where the total rows were and then the space between them. In the date column, notice I have null in those places. I also have null in all the areas of the regions where there was no data there. But noticing where null is located here, I want to use the date column in order to filter out those two rows. So I'm going to hit the down arrow here, the filter arrow, and I'm just going to uncheck Null, and I'll say OK. And now that I've done that, notice all those empty rows and total rows are gone, even down to the grand total at the bottom. And every action that we do here, notice, is indicated and documented in the applied steps on the far right. So I can delete any one of these steps or all the steps up to a certain point if I need to in order to go back or basically undo any changes I'm making to the data. So the next thing I want to do is populate the regions with the names for each region and replace the nulls. So what I can do is I'm going to highlight that whole column and I'm going to go to transform. And notice there's an option here for fill. I select the down arrow and I choose down and now it will populate the, all those null spots with the value that was above. So now I have all the regions filled in instead of blank spaces there. Next I'm going to choose the salesperson's column and in transform there's a format group. I'm going to choose that and change it to capitalize each word and that puts it in a more proper text format rather than the all caps. Date, I want to delete the time factor and just have the date. So in the upper corner here, I'm going to click on there and it'll give me my formatting options and instead of date and time, I'm going to choose date and that'll eliminate the time portion of that formatting. I want to eliminate the total columns because I can do that in my pivot table analysis. So I just select that, right click, and I'm going to say remove, and that gets rid of that. Next thing I want to do is I want to unpivot the five columns here of the different sales items, apples, peaches, etc. So I'm going to highlight the first column, hold down my shift key, highlight the last, 
And then again in the Transform tab, there's an Unpivot Columns option. I'll select that. And now Excel has created over a thousand lines of data by unpivoting those specific items and adding a value column for the sales for each one of those. I'm going to double click in the header here and change attribute to fruit. And I also want to change value here to sales. So the last thing I want to do is confirm the format of each one of the columns. So ABC indicates text. If we click on that, you can see that that's the indicator there. So we know that that column is formatted correct, along with salesperson. Date, we chose that, so we know that one's correct. And fruit is also text. The last one, sales, 1 1.2 indicates a decimal number. And these are all whole numbers, so I'm going to change it to whole number. And that's indicated by 1, 2, 3 in the upper left corner of that column. Now it looks like my data is all in the format I want it. The last thing I need to do is just go to the Home tab and select Close and Load. And what Excel will do is add a new worksheet to my workbook and include in it a table that has the information as I wanted it formatted and unpivoted. And if I hit Control N, you can see I have 1,046 lines in my table. I'm going to go ahead and close the workbook queries list on the side here. And now I can take this data and go to the insert tab, choose pivot table, put it on a new worksheet, and I can put my sales in my values, salesperson in my rows, region in my filters, uh, fruit in the columns. Maybe I'll throw date under salesperson here. Now I'll choose any one of the items in my pivot table, go to valued field settings so I can format the numbers as I want them to be with no decimal places and a thousand separators. Say OK and OK. And then maybe I'm going to add a couple of slicers, maybe for region, salesperson, and fruit type. Say OK. And I can go ahead and put these in any fashion that I want. I'm going to take the salesperson one, make that one two columns wide. So I can keep it in a similar format to the other ones or sizing to the other ones. Maybe I'll change regions width a little bit here. And now I have a nice little analysis tool for my data that I can use to choose any region here or groups of regions. Maybe I can choose uh, just a few salespeople that I want to analyze the data for, and then maybe only for a couple different types of fruit. And it gives me a nice tool to analyze it, and I get away from that original data which was not formatted in a style that allowed me to create a pivot table structured like this to do a good analysis. And that's how you can do that in Excel. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.